putting an offer to market. Probably one of the most important elements to business, especially if you're trying to like consistently start converting clients online. Uh, and this could be whether you're, you know, already creating products or you already have a pre-existing business or you're an affiliate marketer who's looking at, you know, eliminating some competition or kind of standing out in a crowd of people doing the exact same thing as you. Uh, and it's something that gets overlooked or slept on, especially in the affiliate marketing space. Uh, crafting compelling offers can in fact like make or break how easy it is to actually start selling offers or products as a whole. Uh, and especially when you like, you never really know what's gonna happen is like if you nail the angle or the messaging of an actual offer, uh, it can act absolutely change everything about your life, right? Uh, we, we launched a little four-day workshop probably two years ago at this point, uh, and it's turned into hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it's been responsible for our clients, you know, doing over $1.5 million in their own businesses simply because we put an offer to market and we wanted to give it and get it in as many hands as people as possible, right? So I kind of want to give you guys a little bit of a checklist today break down what to think about when you're when you're kind of starting to conceptualize offers. Uh, and the thing to, to note too is like, just because you launch one offer doesn't mean it has to be the end all be all, right? Like your offer is going to evolve as your business evolves. Um, obviously the more success that you guys start having, you're gonna need to be looking at different ways to create leverage. Uh, otherwise you're probably gonna end up burning out. You know, if you're running like a one-on-one -on -one, coaching scenario for every single person and you try to onboard 100 clients, you're, you're gonna end up burning out. So something to take into note. So your quick ROI checklist, we did do a, a live on this a while back, but I kind of wanted to condense it into something shorter for you guys, short, punchy, kind of give you guys uh, the biggest takeaways and, and action steps that you guys can go apply inside of your business. Uh, so launching your first or next offer, even if you're an affiliate with a small audience, um, now, before we dive in, I want you to know, like, even if you don't want to launch your own digital products, you can still, in fact, do this because I know there is some people out there that just want to be affiliates, right? They don't want to do all this other stuff uh, as like a traditional online business owner. But I am going to encourage you guys to start looking at this process because it will actually be a huge part in your sales process and how easy or how difficult it is to actually start selling this. Now, an example of this is like, you know, back in 20, 2019, I was selling a lot of the same offers as, as other affiliates, uh, and I was just getting buried in, in competition, right? It was getting dominated by these huge creators, huge creators, you know, just like dominating everything that's going on in the market. Um, I came in and started giving away a different thing on top of the actual product itself, and that became my front-end messaging. I think at the time, it was like my six-day challenge, my, my six-day uh, fast start program, which basically helped people build and optimize their Facebook profiles and their groups. And that was what I was selling on the front, which then was a brand new thing that nobody else had, but I was still selling the same affiliate offer as everybody else. But everybody started gravitating to me because I had this new thing, right? I had something different than everybody else. So that's something to think about. Now, there's a couple different ways you can effectively do this, and the price is gonna change depending on your actual goals. Right, so now if you're doing this, obviously on the back end of an affiliate product, this isn't necessarily gonna be relevant to you. Uh, but if you are you know, launching your own digital assets, your own courses, your evergreen products, uh, this is something to take into account is if you're gonna plan on using this to you know, create a bunch of cash on the front, build a pool of buyers, uh, or if you're gonna use it as like a, a breeding ground to get people and nurture people, right? That's something that a lot of people tend to overlook is the fact that you can use paid products, paid offers, to actually become a breeding ground for your higher ticket products, right? And if you guys want a little bit a deeper dive into what I'm talking about, be sure to hit the pinned video on my channel. Uh, I break down our entire ecosystem and the model that I'm talking about where you kind of have some leveraged evergreen offers that really accelerate the relationship building, get your clients some quick wins, and then it makes ascension onto your premium price products a lot easier. Right, so the pricing will change on the goal, right? So like you kind of have to start backwards from this and think about what the end goal is before you ever even start putting your offer or start you know, trying to sell this offer. You need to actually figure out what the end goal is, right? And, and it has to be deeper than money, right? Like what do you want the client to, what, what result do you want the client to end with? What is it gonna do for them? Uh, and, and where is it gonna take them, right? 
or alternatively, what piece of their business or their life is it going to help them eliminate, right? Like eliminate sales calls, or maybe you're going to help them, you know, shave perfectly so their wife will kiss them more, or their their husband will kiss them more, or whatever, right? Like, what are things that you can eliminate? Uh, eliminating the lack of intimacy because you have stubble, right? An example of that. So, a couple things you need prior. What you need prior, uh, some type of audience. A little up. What you need prior, some type of audience. It can be tiny. A couple of our clients did 100K in four months with less than 1,500 members in their groups combined. But you need some type of audience. And I think this is where a lot of people miss the mark is they try to build this audience just to sell or they try to sell when they have no audience. And it's like, this is the most valuable asset you're building in your business is the people, right? Without the people, you can't sell products. And without the, the content, you're not going to get the people that want to buy your products. Uh, so this is going to be as effective as possible for people that already have some type of pre-existing audience. And it could be small, right? Our biggest day to date uh, in the last couple of years, we had an $11,000 day out of a Facebook group of 43 people. You don't need a massive audience. You just have to get clear on who your, who your offer is for and what it's going to actually do for the person. Next up would be uh, goodwill built in your audience. And what I really mean by this is if a lot of your content lately has been buy my shit, then you need to start replenishing the goodwill inside of your audience and start talking about offers less if you're actually going to end up rolling into a promotion. And the reason I mention this is because uh, this is something that I did for a really long time is we get into portions of business where we become desperate for sales, right? Like we need sales in the business. So naturally, what do we do? We start talking about sales more. And then what that does is that puts a demand on your audience and they're going to feel like all you're trying to do is sell them shit and you're not actually giving them any value. Um, so you have to have goodwill. Like a good way to look at this is if you're not providing goodwill to your audience or you're not actually giving things away to the people in your content, uh, it's like trying to go and withdraw money from a bank that has no money in it, right? You're trying to pull uh, cash flow out of a, out of a ecosystem or an audience that you ha actually haven't even made any deposits in, right? So why this works so well, it's new. Not many people are doing it. Exclusivity, uh, not sharing it with many. Scarcity, raising price, time, limited spots, uh, personal, custom, all about them, right? That's a big thing. The only reason people buy is because it's in it, something's in it for them, right? And if you're really struggling to convert clients as a whole, like look at this. This is something you need to be looking at. Are you crystal clear as to what it is going to do for the consumer, right? It's that paradox in online business where we talk about, you know, building a personal brand and documenting your life and creating content about yourself, but you need to become clear on where it is actually going to take the person that purchases your product because that is the only reason they buy anything. If they're going to get something out of it, right? Bonuses, extra value, uh, can use this strategy to get paid. Uh, to create your own unique bonuses, right? We've used this over and over again. This is kind of what we do for all of our promotions. Uh, we've done this and we've used this to do as much as 55, 155K in 77 days. Um, another example, right? All about them, their result, their outcome. Where, where is this thing going to take them, right? Like look at fitness ads or like anything like that. It's always about before and afters because it's meant to des create desire about that end goal for the person. Right? They're not they're not creating this ad like, hey, if you're overweight, your life sucks. No, it's like, hey, if you lose weight, this is what your life is gonna look like and this is how you're gonna feel because that's where they wanna go, right? So it's, positioning is an important one with offers. So some quick goals and outcomes for this, right? Get paid to create an asset that will allow you to bolt it onto any relevant affiliate product uh, and increase the prezi value and make you stand out from other affiliates. Um, or, you know, launch your own digital products, suite of products that are actually yours, 100% yours. They're not like a placebo of PLR or anything like that. Like it's your thing. It's your actual product, right? Uh, prioritize you. This is something a lot of uh, like newer online business owners or affiliates tend to miss is like, you need to start building your own pool of buyers and really reinforcing those post-purchase relationships. And this will give you a really awesome way to do that. So like, let's say for example, you, you promote an affiliate product, right? Say it's $100 and then you let them into a private Facebook group with all of your buyers where you're then building relationships with them. The chances of them buying something else will be extremely high, 
uh, and it changes the entire experience for the customer, right? Especially if you're promoting an, someone else's product that is pretty big, uh, it's gonna get pretty impersonal. So it gives you the ability as someone who's newer or like it, it, just diving into the affiliate space, it's gonna give you the ability to prioritize that 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 uh, post-purchase relationship and eventually people will start coming to you for your support systems alone, right? Lastly, kickstart a wave of momentum by stacking your own monetary wins, testimonials, uh, create more leverage for you to go out there and, and have more angles in your content. You're now a leader, right? And, and this is something that a lot of people uh, tend to miss, right? Momentum in business is a very real thing, especially in the online space. And the cool part about the information space is like, let's say you run an offer that creates $10,000, right? Uh, in three weeks or whatever. And then you can then go out and talk about how you did $10,000 in three weeks by putting an offer to market. And then that becomes another offer and another offer. And it kind of just snowball effects uh, into actually stacking momentum in your business. And it's a very, very real thing, right? And a lot of people like to ride this like roller coaster of, you know, run a promo stop and like do this thing where they're not really like compounding their wins into their business. They're kind of just doing things and then stopping and it, it, it's a fucking nightmare, but I'm just rambling. So I digress. Um, the idea thought monetization, what is it? What is this something that you're doing in your business that could help someone, right? Is there something that you're regular doing in your world, uh, that would solve a burning problem for somebody? doesn't have, doesn't matter how small this thing is or big this thing is things that are normal to you aren't normal to people who haven't started doing it. And I wanted to throw this in here because a lot of people might feel like I'm not qualified enough to, you know, help somebody with X, Y, Z. Why would anybody listen to me? And I'm not saying you got to go out there and you got to promise people, you know, a million dollars in 15 minutes. I would encourage you not to do that type of shit. Uh, but if you've been active in business or you've done fucking anything in business, you have expertise and you can shed light on what that looks like, right? How I'm writing content, how I set up my business, how I'm generating more conversations, lead generation, sales strategies, uh, common questions you're seeing be, being asked, right? This is a, a real-time way that, to look at the feedback in the actual market you play in and cover the gaps, right? If if you see the same things being asked, hey, I'm struggling with XYZ, hey, I can't do XYZ, then you probably know that you need to go create an offer around this exact thing. They've told you that. You're seeing that. That's a problem in the market, Right? That's how you do market research. And you can already create demand before you've ever even pr created a product or even started putting an offer to market because you know there's going to be people there that want that thing. This top section is kind of more about like if you're running your own masterclass or a boot camp and stuff like that. Uh, look at things that you actually do in your business, right? Like one of our signature offers, Group Juice, uh, ended up getting launched and, and created because we formulated a process that we were using in our own unique businesses, started to have a lot of success with it. And we were like, hey, we should probably launch a workshop teaching this thing, which has then went on to change hundreds and hundreds of people's lives simply because we started talking about what we were actually doing inside of our business and what it's done for us. Now, if you're doing this off the back end of an affiliate product, uh, you wanna keep it linear to the product itself, right? So an example of this is like, if you're selling a like a weight loss program, right? Or let's say you're selling a 12 week fitness program, you don't wanna give them, you know, eBooks about making money online or something like that, right? Like you would wanna stack things on top of, you know, your affiliate product that are actually congruent or would enhance the product itself, right? Not contradict or make it polarizing, right? And I see a lot of people doing this in the market. They're like, have this product and it's it's not congruent to what their, their messaging is on the front. So if you are doing a, a strategy like this off the back end of an affiliate product, you need to keep it congruent with the actual product itself and look at enhancing the actual customer's experience with the affiliate product, right? It's not meant to replace, it's meant to enhance. It's meant to make it better, which then means everybody who's buying it from you instead of other affiliates gets a better experience from purchasing that product from you than somebody else. Next up is pre-selling it, right? We're, we're absolutely massive on pre-selling, right? This is a big thing that a lot of people tend to overlook or I made the biggest, I made a lot of these mistakes when I was beginning, right? I would build these, these masterclasses and I would build all these things 
uh, and then I would have no demand for them and they wouldn't sell. And I would wonder why anything's not working. Uh, so we re we prefer to pre-sell everything. And what I really mean by that is like acquire interest in your audience first, start putting content out about, start building like a wait list, put out, you know, pe lead gen posts like, hey, I'm thinking about doing a masterclass on XYZ. Uh, if that's something you'd be interested in, uh, drop a, you know, masterclass in the comments, right? You, you want to start building interest before you ever even start putting in work. Uh, because the worst case scenario is you end up, you know, spending the next six weeks building this course and then nobody buys it. You just wasted six weeks, right? You just wasted all that time building this thing that you couldn't even create demand for. So we kind of like to do it backwards. Um, a lot of the times we'll, we'll even pre-sell spots, right? We'll end up, we do everything as pretty much a live workshop. And then we end up chopping those up and spinning those into evergreen courses. So what we end up doing is we'll plan this, this offer, right? We'll start building demand in our audience around this offer and we'll start selling spots and then we'll nail a deadline when we're going to close off the thing. And then we will, you know, kick off the actual live workshop itself. Uh, and then we'll put those recordings and turn it into an evergreen product that we can sell over and over again. But we always pre-sell our offers, right? We're not going and creating all these master classes and courses and programs, you know, spending all this time building out all these complex systems before we're selling spots. Uh, and the reason for that is, is obviously because you got to get the demand first and you don't want to end up burning yourself out and putting all this energy into something that doesn't even sell, right? It gives you the ability to kind of play around with angles or nuances on the front if you pre-sell it because you can figure out what your audience actually wants, needs, and then you can actually, uh, you know, change it up and you can like pivot the offer itself to, you know, match what your audience is telling you they need and doubling down on that. Next up is like nailing the timeline, giving yourself more time to run a promotion for your actual offer. Uh, this is the biggest thing we see throwing a lot of people off. Uh, they have an idea for an offer, they post about it three times, don't sell any spots, and then they scratch the whole idea. You need to give yourself, you need to give yourself and your audience enough time to acclimate to what you're doing. You need to give yourself no, enough room to start selling spots and hitting different angles inside of your content. Uh, an example of this is like we had a couple of clients who took this predictable profits framework, uh, which this is a snapshot of that, uh, and they ended up doing 100K in 100 days with an offer we helped them create. Uh, but the first like four or five days of their promotion was crickets, right? They were getting nobody. Nobody was raising their hands on their content. Nobody was jumping in or buying or anything like that. Um, and then on like day six, they had like four or five people buy. Right. And then they've turned around and turned that into a multi six figure product. But the point I'm trying to make is you have to give your, yourself and your audience, more importantly, enough time to get acclimated or even become aware of what you're planning on doing. Right. We can't post about something one time and expect everybody in your audience to see that. Right. Especially if it's your first time ever like running an actual promotion or putting an offer to market. Uh, would usually play around with a little bit of a, a, a longer time horizon. Uh, and then obviously, if you you have a good offer already or you have a, a pretty engaged audience and you know how to create really compelling content, you can go shorter, right? We've done promotions as long as 60 days uh, and then we've done them as, as little as like 48 hours. Uh, it also will depend on price, right? Like if you're running a offer that's, you know, $15, Right, you can be pretty pretty aggressive with putting that offer to market and being like, "Hey, I have this thing and it's going away in, in four days." Like, you can grab a spot. Like, hit me hit me up if you want a spot. Uh, versus if you're sell, trying to sell something that's you know a couple thousand dollars, uh, you're gonna have to like be a little bit more specific in the content and nail more of the outcome for the person uh, because the reasons behind buying those two different pr price products are usually different for the actual consumer. A lot of the cheap, inexpensive stuff, people are looking for like tips and tricks and tactics and, you know, magical band-aids to their business or whatever. Uh, whereas people who are investing in premium price products are usually looking for some type of big transformation. Um, next up is plugging together the offer. Uh, we're big on Google Docs and PDFs. Like if you couldn't tell from this training in a lot of my videos, we run pretty much everything on Google. Um, thanks to JC, we've turned... Uh, the English language into over $400,000 a year, leveraging a Google document, right? This is a big element to us eliminating sales calls completely. Uh, you know, we've processed over 2,600 payments in the last two years with less than a dozen calls total. 
Uh, and a big part of it is by having a, a compelling offer doc, right? If you guys want some actual hands-on help on creating an offer doc yourself, again, hit the pinned video on the channel uh, and, and you can kind of get um, a lay down of, of how we can personally help you do this and, and actually deploy this ecosystem into your own business. Uh, but this is hands down, the thing that's changed everything about our life. Uh, very simple process, you know, short form video on the front, you know, right here, and then to a group, right? To chat, to chat to somebody, and then we send them a Google document to convert the sale, right? Very easy linear process that we've been refining since 2022, or since 2021, sorry. Um, setup and structure, this is a big one. Keep, we're all about keeping things as simple as fuck, right? Like we're, we're probably the most basic bitches online. Uh, we don't want these complex systems, complex things to actually like, uh, you know, make our business run. Like you guys would be surprised if I actually peeled back the curtain and talked about what actually entails in our seven figure business. Um, the easiest and the quickest way obviously would be to build out a separate group where you're going to be running the training, giving the resources once they've bought uh, plug them into a Google Drive and give them a folder when they've purchased, right? We've literally sold replays of trainings in a Google folder. Uh, best case scenario would probably be having some type of buyer's group or support structure. Uh, obviously, for longevity, we're big on communities. Uh, but at the same time, if you already run a group, you already have a couple groups, like you don't want to just keep adding more and more groups to your plate. Uh, you can do pop-up groups, which are work really well for like, if you create a group, purely for the intention of running a live workshop or running your offer. And then after the after the workshop's done, you close down the group and you kind of shut it down, right? It uh, doesn't have to be anything hyper fancy, especially in the earlier stages. Um, prioritizing a private buyer's group will give you the ability to start building your own pool of people, right? That's what's going to give you guys the long-term security in business is building your own roster of clients, right? Even if you're selling products as an affiliate, right? I mean, yeah, it's cool to send people to the, the affiliate products group, but you need to you need to send them to your own too, right? Because when that affiliate product goes out of business or they stop trending, what's going to happen to you? Just some food for thought. Uh, free training kickoff. We've kicked off every single promotion with some sort of free training. Uh, we, we usually call this our cash mullet kickoff where we run a very high value on uh, high value free training on the front with the goal of get, helping somebody get an actual specific result uh, we're not going into it like, hey, I'm going to create this surface level level garbage training with the hopes of just like getting people to buy. We want people to actually get some results from this free training and then, you know, make an offer on the back end, right? We want to make an offer at the back end. If you guys want a real-time example of what this looks like, go hit the, the video on my channel. That's a good real-time example of what I'm talking about, right? Very high value free training on the front where there is an option to come join us or work with us a little bit closer on the back end if the person wants to, but they don't have to, right? They can still go and take the information at hand and go get some type of result because the reality is, is if you can help somebody get a result from your free content, the chances of them actually coming back and purchasing from you goes through the roof. So that's how we kind of kick off all of our uh, all of our promotions, right? We've done this with JVs, we've done it with clients, we've done this with our own products, we always run some type of free thing on the front to kick it off, let people know what we're doing, how we're doing things, like you know what they could expect if they did potentially end up coming to want to rock with us or work with us closer. Um, and then we we extend invitations on the back, like hey, we if you guys want to do this together, you you want to deploy this information together, you want some hands on help, you want some support, uh, we'd be more than happy to have a chat about that and you know ping us a message. Uh, so that's kind of what that looks like. Um, content rotation. This, this is also another really big one in promotions or launching an offer, uh, rotating between different styles, pain points inside of your content throughout the duration of your promotion. Uh, if you if your thing solves five different things and the affiliate product solves another five, uh, you have 10 different angles or 10 different solutions to problems, uh, cycle through all of them. And the reason that I mentioned this, and this is a very important one is, you, you have to find an angle or, or a pain point or a solution that really resonates with the audience. Uh, and you kind of want to cycle through as many as you can because say, for example, if I'm talking about, you know, how to make a thousand dollar day online and I'm doing a 21 day offer launch, 
uh, I don't want to talk about how to make a thousand dollars online in the quickest way possible for 21 days because within that first week, everybody already knew that that's what I'm helping them do, right? I've already built all the awareness around that, right? So if you're not getting a lot of lead flow, or you're not getting a lot of hand raisers around that topic, the more angles that you can play, the better off you're going to be because your audience isn't so black and white. Everybody in your audience is going to be at a little bit of a different stage. They're going to be struggling with different problems. So you have to kind of go through different nuances of what's actually in the offer and what it's going to do for people if you want to maximize the effectiveness of actually putting an offer to market. Next up is stacking some micro momentum, right? People start jumping in people consuming the free training you ran. Uh, someone has a takeaway from the training. Bring all of that to your public content. People having wins, right? Like, it's, it breeds proof of concept and causes FOMO, which will get more eyeballs on your training and your actual offer if you start creating as much awareness as you can throughout the duration of like launching your offer. Uh, next up is, is hammering limited availability deadlines. Now, it depends on how long your promotion is, uh, but if you're doing something a little bit longer, you're probably not going to want to come out of the gate hammering a deadline because you're gonna drain your audience relatively quickly. So usually I like to say at about the halfway point in your promotion or launching your offer, you're probably gonna to wanna to start talking about the deadlines uh, or the limited availability or like the scarcity and the FOMO. Um, but the reality is, is, is nothing sells like a deadline. Let people know that the thing is going away, uh, that the price is increasing, that you're capping spots, right? Like all of these different things would be you know, field in your content, but I usually wouldn't start doing that until about halfway. Uh, otherwise, you're probably going to start burning out your audience. Like we just ran a 45-day promotion for a discounted payment plan option for one of our signature products, Group Juice. Uh, and we probably didn't start talking about the discounted payment plan option going away. Uh, we started talking about that it was available, right? We started talking about, hey, you can get in on a no interest payment plan, uh, stuff like that. But we weren't mentioning like, hey, you have to get in now before it goes away until probably the last two, two and a half weeks because we don't want to burn our audience out, right? We don't want to just burn them out right out of the gate and then gobble up all that, you know, goodwill and, and put a massive strain on our audience because that's a real thing, right? The more that you're trying to sell to your audience, you're going to have to, you're going to put strain on them, right? So that's like what we talk about is where you kind of have to have that delicate balance of, you know, running that free training on the front. That's the real power of this is because you can run this free training, right? Which gives value to the, to the people in your worlds. And then you can sell off the back end of this, which means you can maintain high levels of goodwill while selling offers in unison instead of, Hey, I have this thing and you have to buy it right now. And if you don't, your life's going to be shit. Uh, because everybody after three weeks of doing that is going to be like, I don't even want to listen to this person anymore right? Like you're, you're just spamming me with this product, right? So this is the, the main intention behind running this free training is we want to have that balance of goodwill and, and making offers at the same time. Uh, and to be clear, that does not mean your offers stop in your DMs, right? You're always, that's the point of having a conversation with somebody is you want to see if they're a good candidate. And if they're not, refeed them back into your worlds. But you want to actually, you know, not not stop selling in the DMs. Like that's why you're talking to people is to see if they're good candidates to buy your products. So I just wanted to uh, make that clear. Uh, quick recap, promo flow. Decide on what you're going to be covering, four to six topics that you're covered, confident in uh, or enhance the affiliate product if you're doing this off of the back thing, right? The back end of an affiliate product, right? Like it would be the same exact model. You just, hey, you get access to my, my training or my buyer's group when you purchase the affiliate product. Um... Craft the, the offer doc, right? We prefer PDFs, Google Docs. Uh, if you're doing this off the back end of an affiliate, uh, you are the focus. You are the focus and what you are providing for them is the focus and the affiliate product is the bonus. It's a good way to look at it. Um, run, a, run a training talking about the four to six topics and what it's actually gonna do to help those people who partake, right? Make it about them. Use your content to feed the free training you ran and fuel conversations, right? Use conversations and everybody who comments and interacts um, on, on the free training uh, to get eyeballs on the offer doc you just created. Close sales, run all the trainings inside of a private buyer's group or put them inside 
uh, if you do pre-recorded, some people prefer pre-recorded instead of live. Um, rinse and repeat. Do this as many times as your heart desires and as many offers as you want, right? You've now just got paid to create an asset that you can sell over and over again or add any relevant bonuses on top of an affiliate product, which gives you a competitive advantage because no one else has that thing. You put in the work one time and generate the income for years to come, right? That's that's kind of our whole promotion framework, a little bit of an ROI checklist. This is kind of something we run through every time we've put an offer to market and we've launched dozens and dozens of products. We've helped our clients launch dozens of products and this is exactly what we give them. So give it a, a go, give it a, give it a uh, you know, I'll drop the, the actual document in the comments of this video and give this a, a try. Next time you're thinking about putting something to market or you're trying to sell more of your product uh, and let me know how it goes, right? If you make some money from using this framework, then maybe one day we'll work together and you know we'll help you work on some shit, some hands-on help and you know, we can make some magic happen. But if not, no harm, no foul. Just go out and deploy this and I'll see you in the next one.